Angel. You're an American citizen, Angel. You're born in San Francisco. Okay, so you're blessed. You're not a migrant. Okay, so be a nice, uh, be a nice, uh, what, what do you want me to call you? Do you want me to call you, uh, um, no, I'm not gonna say it. Okay, so be a nice, be a nice one. Okay, you're blessed. You're an American citizen, born in San Francisco. What's your name? Angel, right? Okay. So if I'm being perfectly honest, I did not expect on this channel for me to be making back-to-back -back videos about the migrant crisis, specifically in the city of New York. But here we are because I saw a new segment that just aggravated me beyond all end and I saw a version of it on Twitter first, then I found the full segment. And the way that this is being portrayed by the media is asinine and ridiculous in every possible way. And to be clear, I'm not one of those people who says that you should demonize these illegal migrants, treat them as if they're all sinister actors or anything like that. The fact of the matter is, our country has incentivized this kind of behavior, and the behavior that I'm talking about is in fact asylum fraud. If you come to this country and you try to sneak past Border Patrol and you get caught by Border Patrol, you can be immediately deported back to your home country by Border Patrol. Unless, of course, you then say that you are here for asylum, you're under threat, and then all of a sudden you get paroled into this nation for seven to ten years, look at the court dates, look at the immigration backlog, set up a whole life, and it becomes impossible for you to leave. Obviously, this is a loophole in our immigration law. Obviously, this is something that the evil orange man tried to fix with the Remain in Mexico policy. Obviously, the Democrats called that evil white racism. And obviously, a system like this is unsustainable. But when you lay out those kind of incentives in a great country like the United States of America, what do you expect these people to do? I would want them to be honest, and I don't want to excuse their behavior. I don't want to let them into the country because it was incentivized. But we have to acknowledge the policy failure that led to this if we want to fix this in the future. That being said, I am sick and tired of people portraying them as victims because we ran out of resources that were providing them for free that we're not providing to our own citizens, and that's what today's video is about. But before we get into that, I want to say thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Um, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay? And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Some migrants have become so desperate to find housing, they're willing to sleep outside a ticketing center and the freezing temperatures to be first in line to reapply for shelter this morning. About 20 degrees out there this morning, pretty dangerous. So my timeline has been inundated with segment after segment about how migrants are forced, forced to sleep out in the cold on the streets of New York City. Forced to do so. And this has really been getting under my skin. Now we're going to play some of these segments, we're going to go over them, you're going to watch them portray the plight of these migrants, but I want you to pay attention to the language that they're talking about, to the fact that they're saying that this is being imposed on them, and then we're going to go into the reality of this particular system and this particular issue. Dan Tijani, well, lots of people here lined up outside of this particular office because they only accept walk-ins. That's why you have people standing out here in the bitter cold and also sleeping out here, all in the hopes of getting an ID NYC card by the end of the day. So first of all, and this is probably the most important part of the segment, Lizette Nunes, very attractive woman. I'm not saying anything. But you guys out there in the audience, you're preverts, you're disgusting, you disgust me, and I know that I would get nonstop comments about her appearance if not for you guys, so honestly, shame on all of you. Secondly, and this is just as important, maybe you would even consider it to be more substantive, is the fact that the way that this is being portrayed is that New York City has this really aggressively bad policy when it comes to the migrants. And what is bad about this? Well, first of all, the ticketing office that gets these people into the shelters, they don't accept appointments. They only accept the walk-ins. And honestly, that's shameful and disgusting because look at these migrants lining up to be first in line in order to get in these shelters. Now, the other policy that is often being criticized by our local media here is the fact that you get 30 days in the shelter before you have to be moved out, go to a reticketing office, 
in order to get into a different shelter. Now, the reason for this policy is because these migrants would stay there in perpetuity, and there's new people, plus American homeless people, that need to gain access to these shelters, and there has to be some way for you to sort through them, and the idea that we're going to allow single men to stay for more than 30 days when we have families and homeless Americans waiting in line and can't get in is absurd and ridiculous, not to mention all the fights and all the problems that, that go on when people are in these shelters for prolonged periods of time. And by the way, there's also a limit for families because they are so short in terms of beds that is 60 days. So there are limits being imposed and part of the system of these people having to get back into the shelters is that they have to reapply. But the idea that this is such a hardship for the migrants and we're not talking about our mentally ill homeless people who are out in the cold, our veterans of war homeless people who are out in the cold, our drug addicted homeless people who are out in the cold, despite the fact that those are American citizens and we're talking about the plight of migrants, really gets under my skin, but it's about to get a lot worse. It's about to get a lot more annoying. I am cool. No e. As temperatures have dipped below freezing for days, migrants continue to line up to receive shelter and services. This was the sign at St. Bridget's School in the East Village. So I want you to take a special note of the accent of the woman that they just showed right there because they're going to talk to her a little bit further. And you might be hearing maybe some French influence or something like that from her voice. So you might think, oh, well, maybe she's from Haiti. But the thing is, she's not even from the hemisphere. This woman is from Guinea, and if you watched my videos before, you'll know that me, Nuance Bro, Tony from Current Revolt, the Texas paper of record, ended up encountering migrants from Guinea that were being sent all around the country, including to New York City, by nonprofits, Catholic nonprofits, by the way, because they apparently also need asylum from problems in their own government. And they also have a divine right to go to New York City and mooch off our system, despite the fact that there are so many countries between the United States and Guinea, it's absurd and ridiculous. But it's about to get even more ridiculous and even more annoying. And remember, the captions, the titles, and all of that related to these segments are about how these people are forced to sleep on the streets of New York City. Forced. It has been imposed upon them. This couple from Guinea showed up yesterday to get placed in a new shelter after the 30 days were up. But the reticketing offices had closed by the time they got there. It's my first time to this, this situation. In my life, I never, I never have this difficult online. So it's kind of hard to hear this guy from his accent, but he's saying that this is a difficult situation. He never had this kind of difficulty in his life. And again, this should beg the question, because by the way, we've seen the forms of these people from Guinea, and they put fear of safety, that's why they're coming to the United States of America and committing asylum fraud. Why did he come to the United States of America and commit asylum fraud? Why did he come to New York City expecting a right to shelter because we have that stupid law that is a magnet for these people? And why is he complaining now about how this is the greatest hardship of his life while at the same time he's committing asylum fraud? He is saying that it is so dangerous in his home country that he needed to go to Latin America. He needed to pay off a cartel in order to smuggle him up to the border. He needed to claim asylum at the border. He needed to go to a Texas government official and ask for a bus ticket to New York City that the arriving at New York City and being out in the cold in New York City is the hardest portion of his entire life. It's the most difficult thing that he had to go through. So maybe he needs asylum from New York City. I got a great idea for you. We'll get you a ticket back to Guinea where the weather is much nicer. Let me check the temperature for you. It's 83 degrees at the time of me recording this video. And if you go there, you'll never have to worry about the cold, cold weather that's making this the hardest portion of your life here in New York City. More migrants braved the cold at a city office in Brooklyn. Mutual aid was at hand giving out coffee and hot soup as migrants waited in line for a chance to get an ID NYC card. Entonces, la única esperanza es hacer un poquito de centavos aquí, como me den el papel por un mes, por tres meses, que Dios sea lo que sea, y en ese tiempo Dios me tiene, me va a bendecir con buen trabajo. This woman from Honduras says she's 61 and is hoping to make some money. 
She says she's willing to do whatever, including sweeping the streets. Again, this whole segment is about how people are forced into this position. They're forced out in the cold. And right here, we have a 61-year-old woman who's out in the cold. And it is meant to garner sympathy for you guys out there in the audience. And to be clear, I don't want 61-year-olds sleeping out in the cold. I would like for people to be in better positions in their life. But that being said, I'm not blind to the fact that she just said that she's here to make money, not claiming asylum, even though she likely made it through the border based on a fraudulent asylum claim. Right here in front of our very eyes, we have somebody telling you that they're an economic migrant, they came here illegally under the false claim of asylum, and it's not even being addressed. On top of that, we're not addressing the fact that there are so many countries between Honduras and the U.S.-Mexico border that this woman theoretically could have claimed asylum in, and yet she refused to do so. On top of that, a safer country than New York City, than the United States of America as a whole almost, is El Salvador. They recently locked up all their criminal types, we've talked about it on this channel multiple different times, and guess where El Salvador is in proportion to Honduras? That's right, it's right next door. This is like the safest country in Latin America right now. She already speaks the language. She's in a border country. She's already compatible with the culture and all that. And yet she's in New York City where they have a right to housing, lining up for the right to housing, telling you on the news that she committed asylum fraud in order to get here. And we're all supposed to pretend like this is normal, average, logical behavior. So while I do feel bad for a 61 year old woman out on the streets, I feel much more bad for the 61-year-olds, the older people, the military vets, the mentally disabled, the mentally ill, the drug-addicted American that is out on the streets that are dealing with this. And by the way, they don't have the time, the energy, the fortitude based on their myriad of mental conditions to line up outside of these offices in order to get these shelters. But there is a misconception that an ID NYC card will automatically lead to a job. Migrants still need to be granted federal work authorization, which itself can be a long legal process. Immigrant advocates worry that misinformation, coupled with desperation, is unnecessarily causing migrants to put their health and lives at risk in the bitter cold. You know, this is just another one of those situations, another one of those moments where I hear something being said by a left-wing person, and I can't believe that they could say that with a straight face while holding all of the other positions that they hold. So... Remember when Eric Adams, I talked about this on the channel, tried closing the border to New York City to migrants? He put in these schedules where basically it became impossible to drop these people off, threatened to impound the buses, arrest the bus drivers if they continued to flow into the city, and he proposed all of these restrictions for the border of New York City. Same thing happened in Chicago. They were all sensible and logical for our nation to have as a whole while being an advocate of open borders, just like Brandon Johnson. Well... This is a similar situation right here. They're talking about the misinformation that these migrants are dealing with that is causing them to camp outside for these New York City IDs, which they now think that they need in order to get their right to shelter. But the thing is, that same misinformation is what is causing them to flood to the border. The idea that they'll be welcomed, the idea that the sanctuary cities have all these resources to shower them with money, that's what's causing them to come here in the first place. But there's no problem with that misinformation. There's no issue with those things being told to people in Latin America, with them being taught on how to claim from asylum, on the magnets being so strong and the propaganda being so strong that we're getting people from Africa taking this dangerous journey. It's only the issue of them lining up in the cold that these immigration advocates actually have a problem with. It's only the effect of their policies being seen on the streets of New York City that gives them a little bit of pause. This is so frustrating an issue to deal with because again, I'm a sympathetic person. I'm probably more open to immigration than the average conservative American right now in this moment. But that being said, we have to have a process. That being said, we have to not only clean up the asylum process and streamline it for the sake of Americans, but we have to actually do this for the people who legitimately need asylum. The fact that we have 3.2 million people in the immigration case backlog and nowhere near the judges to process that means that, of course, when they're rushing through these cases, 
Some people who have legitimate justifiable claims are going to get deported to their home country, likely end up being killed, while all of these fraudsters are going to be in here chewing up our welfare benefits and fighting each other in the streets. So this office in Brooklyn opens at 9 this morning. So the people that you're looking at right now, they have to be here outside for at least four more hours. Now, because of the cold temperatures, you're taking a look at people here sleeping on cardboard boxes and also placing pieces of wood between them and also the ground to kind of serve as a barrier and try to keep them warm during these really cold temperatures. This is an abomination for our country. This is a disaster. And all that is being proposed is to better process these migrants at the border to make it easier for them to be filtered into this country. Nothing is being done about actually preventing them from coming in. Nothing is being done about putting pressure on Mexico to stop letting these caravans of migrants pass through their country. Nothing is being done to force these people, if they're going to fraudulently claim asylum here, to at least try their luck at asylum claims in each and every country they stop by in between wherever they originate from and the United States of America. All of that is off the table, and all we get is more magnets, more things to draw migrants in, and more human crisis, more human tragedy as the result. This is disgusting. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. But the idea that, yet again, these people are being portrayed as being forced to sleep out in the cold aggravates me beyond all end. You're the people who told them that everything would be great for them to come here. You're the people who taught them to commit asylum fraud. They made the decisions to do all of these things, take all these steps in order to come into the United States of America illegally, by the way. Nobody forced them to do anything of the sort. The fact that it wasn't as magical as they expected is on them, it's on the system, but it is definitely in no way, shape, or form on the city of New York or any city for not having enough resources to import half the third world into our country. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you like the video, show them by leaving a like. Subscribe for more content. Follow me on the social media support via the support links in the description of this video. This has been me talking about the ridiculous way the migrant crisis is being betrayed in the city of New York. Till next time. Angel. It's nice. You're, you're an American citizen, huh? You're an American citizen. Huh? You're blessed. You're born in San Francisco. Do you have a passport? Okay, you better show your passport. Bring your passport, okay? They might think you're a migrant. Okay, you're illegal. Okay, Angel? So be sure. Prepare yourself, okay? Huh? Okay? Okay.